Welcome to the Banega Swasth India podcast. Our focus is on creating a holistic and healthy India for each and every one. Our goal is luxurious and purna swasthika where citizens, individuals, society and governments work together to ensure health for all. Ever since its inception in 1996 Bharat Biotech has been at the forefront in research and development works in mapping viruses and creating vaccine solutions for the world. During the COVID pandemic, Bharat Biotech introduced India's first indigenous COVID-19 vaccine, Covaxin. I'm Ambika Singh Kama and today we're joined by Suchitra Ella, co-founder and managing director of Bharat Biotech. We will discuss the vaccine development process challenges during the pandemic and how to strengthen operations in the pharmaceutical sector for future epidemics thank you so much ms ella for joining us today hi ambika um, um uh, very nice uh, warm greetings to you ms ella what kind of challenges did india face during the covid-19 pandemic and how can the pharmaceutical sector be better prepared for future disease outbreaks when the pandemic hit us uh, we had issues with testing first uh because we were not uh, uh, you know uh, ha- we did not have sufficient um um uh, you know uh, the network of uh, the uh, labs around the country though we there are many but the assays in particular that are required the tests the test assays that are required in particular for testing a particular virus which in this case happened to be the SARS CoV-2 virus uh was not there in, in initially which again was a global problem and then parallelly came the admissions in the hospitals uh for those of them who were severely in uh, you know infected mm-hmm. because of the transmission rates the wave i mean the first wave caught us all um off guard i mean i don't think anybody was prepared for it even the the large countries like the united states and the western world had called out for help they needed antivirals and all kinds of other medications which india again has been on the forefront because we have a huge uh, <clears throat> bandwidth of pharmaceutical manufacturing organizations uh, and we had the bandwidth to manufacture antivirals for a very very long time when we started doing the vaccine development uh our only resource was vaccine manufacturing because we again have a large foothold in this country where we are absolutely 100% self sufficient when it comes to vaccine manufacturing all our vaccines in the international immunization in the universal immunization program are manufactured by indian manufacturers so the large volumes in terms of a normal birth cohort of the country is manageable say 100 200 million doses of vaccines of every vaccine has been done in the past and it continues to be done but when the pandemic hit us it was just mind blowing because the entire population has to be addressed so that is where then the issues start the real challenges come is yeah, when yeah. we have to scale up to the numbers that we are we have to play and we have to be ready to um, vaccinate so we've reached out to the niv the national institute of virology to the icmr primarily and then asked for these virus strains because at that point of india we did not have r and d labs in our country who had at least started uh, doing some work or had some background information on the virus itself so we reached out and we res- got the strains from um, niv pune and then our uh, work started rolling out we brought the actual strains of the sars cov 2 uh, virus into our uh, facilities live uh, and kicking of course and uh, our bioprocess engineers and te- technologists who deal with all these um, uh, areas of bioprocesses uh, then started uh, working with it and uh, you know multiplied it inactivated it and then formulated the vaccine uh, in probably less than 45 days but after which then came the enormous task of proving that this proof of concept will work efficiently 
effectively and safely i think that is the most important point in normal scenarios i i i can talk about we look at vaccines for 10 15 and 20 years sometimes we don't have an end product or an end result coming out of the tunnel but in this case during the pandemic in spite of the challenges that we had and the covid restrictions the all the other issues uh, the social factors the fears the public health uh, protocols that we had to um, also be uh, very cognizant of in in ensuring that safety of our own employees was also extremely important uh, because they were all working all of us were working in fact and uh, <clears throat> that is how i think we collaborated we partnered with medical institutions with uh, r&d laboratories with hospitals and with doctors and the medical fraternity in order to ensure that um, that our 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 vaccine would be proven and would be uh, would be a very strong candidate potential candidate for being uh, introduced uh, for immunizing uh, our own population in india and elsewhere if required banega's west india podcast will be back after a short break watch out for the banega swasth india video podcast swasthya mantra the first ever health and hygiene podcast it's launching on 5th of may that's world hand hygiene day on spotify apple and youtube in english and in hindi Welcome back to Banega Swasth India podcast. Tell us what have been our learnings from the COVID-19 pandemic when it comes to vaccine delivery. I would say in terms of the way our public distribution mechanism in this country works, uh, the government system works through distribution to the states, the states send it to their um district hospitals the district hospitals from there on would send it to their the the small rural uh, primary health centers or the mandal at the taluk or the mandal level depots that they have so these vaccines our own vaccines in the past uh, i mean the country's vaccines not our companies are all stored anywhere between minus 20 degrees for example which is the polio vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine and then we have graduate also we have a range which brings us to 2 to 8 degrees so we have a bandwidth of vaccines which we have been continuously manufacturing supplying and distribute and distributing so <clears throat> when it comes to distribution uh, the public system is only through the pr- public hospitals and the public chain of distribution whereas and then we also have the other sm- segment which is not as big as the public one this is the private market where we have private hospitals and private um clinics and doctors who procure mostly pediatricians and general physicians who do who then procure most of these uh, vaccines depending on their uh, practice and their uh, um, area of expertise procure them directly from the distributors that we have in the private market as well there are absolutely a pockets where it is very difficult the asha worker or the last mile um, public wo- uh, health worker is the only person who is going to be able to carry a vaccine on horseback or camel back or on their own backs on cycles and many other modes of drones were deployed Sachitra so, how can big pharma help achieve the goal of health for all we need to look at funding ourselves increase funding increase partnerships among ourselves if we can if we have the expertise look at uh, similarities and you know uh, complementing e- each other in terms of how our expertise and the other organizations expertise can come hand in hand i think that was also tried out during the pandemic the, the uh, you know there were companies which whom even we have worked with we collaborated with other vaccine players uh, who could give us some aspect of the process so that we could cut time we could reduce time in manufacturing so we have done that we we need to collaborate more with r and d institutions and i think mm. our own r and d institutions in the country also have to come um halfway to the you know on to the table and both of us 
sit together and do this in you know jointly in public mm. private partnerships which was also demonstrated by us uh, about 5 7 years ago in the rotavirus vaccine development the best way going forward would be public private partnership i think that will solve a majority of the challenges that we face um, in the industry today thank you ms ella for joining us today and sharing your expertise with us you're welcome thank you so much that's it on the banega swast india podcast this week if you have comments queries or suggestions on the topic we discussed today or issues you would like us to cover in future do write to us on bsi podcast at the rate ndtv.com remember bsi stands for banega swast india you can also connect with us on banega swast india handles on facebook twitter and instagram and continue the conversation through the week Till next week this is Ambika Singh Kama signing off stay healthy and stay safe